Oh wait, wait, wait! Oh, shit, Ur- sorry. Urshuk podcast. <laughs> Too late. Urshuk podcast. We're running. We're running. We're running. Kyle Nash, Big Jim, James Neese. This is actually the first time us three together on this show as a uh, triplets, of course, uh, since last July. Yes, your show, right? Yeah. It's been that long. For us wow. three together, together. I'm three. glad we filed so much for content. Won't be a problem tonight, will it? <laughs> So Kyle, you, you got you got you to gotta understand when EJ starts that fake countdown that he does that there's no stopping it. Fool, who are you telling? <laughs> uh, fake countdown. Listen, if it wasn't for me constantly dunking on him as a reminder that I exist, the student of the game report would never happen. Bing! All the grays <laughs> in my beard. I swear to God, half the grays are from the last like like eight nine years of the report. I swear to God, your grays. I'm the one drinking a beverage on this fucking show. Oh look, and by hey, the you, way. You, I want you, to- you- <laughs> I want the record to show I've already cursed more on your show than you do mine. I feel like that's vengeance somehow. Oh, my God. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, I guess with the look. news we got today, I'll tease it a bit. Apparently saying fuck on a show is cool now. There you go. Yeah. Good job, ESPN. Well, They're saying fuck is cool. Consider me Miles Davis. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny already. It's extra funny that the whitest guy on the panel is the one that dropped that. Props right. to you, Jim. Oh, wait, so, you're, so, so you are you are definitely claiming you're what that, that he's wider than you, Kyle. You are definitely claiming that. Is there like anybody a debating conversation? That? Listen, no, no, you're confused. Just because you have so many bad takes that I have to debate you all the time doesn't mean I debate things all the time. And That's yet, right? And yet, and yet, he's probably the wokest one of the three of us. <laughs> Oh, it's not close. <laughs> oh, without question. I again, who was debating this? I'm already, <laughs> I have to tell you, I'm generally afraid about talking about the AFC South when we kick the huddle up podcast back into the gear during the season. Bing! Because yeah. if we mention the Colts quarterback and I call him AR 15, he's going to throw a shit fit. <laughs> Dude, I, think this, I think this year, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to do this because, you know, the offseason, I haven't had a chance to really get. To talk about this much, and I, I know I had Zach on, on Saturday. We touched a little bit on a couple of things I mean, here and there. But, yeah. talking sports. <laughs> <laughs> but to to talk to you know you guys about this really, I I haven't been on Hull up since uh since the season ended, honestly, right? Yeah, you yeah, 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 you haven't been on any of the off season recordings. Yeah, because so. I I missed the uh I missed the show uh because of the heat game, of course. You were on assignment, right? Yeah, and the so. first one I think you were still out on on the injured reserve. Yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah that's true. Um, lots happened since uh, February. <laughs> lots happened, to say the least. A little bit. Um, um, and, and, and look, we I I know I spoke about it on this show, on my own, of course. But I'd like to have some more feedback from people uh, who made us all our stuff. My God, it's right, fourteen seven Denver. This game just started. What the fuck? Holy crap! Anyway, um, altitude's a thing, dude. I guess what's been the biggest story for you guys that's that's kind of intrigued the most between free agency, the acquisitions, the, the draft. What has been the thing that's really kept your like intrigue to so far since February? I mean, since you're you 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 obviously have to be talking about the NFL and yeah, of know, course yeah, NFL yeah. I mean, I mentioned. I mean, I know you're going to skip right over the XFL championship happening, such that it is. I know that Jim's Brahma's it, it did happen way. right on sa- on Saturday, right? Well, Sunday. You know what kills me about it, man, is is if I would have just stayed loyal to the Dallas Arlington franchise, I could be celebrating a title. Yeah. Right now, but I had to get greedy and go with uh, go with the Brahmas because first yeah. off, I'm a wrestling fan, and second off, they had an ex Notre Dame quarterback on that roster. So mm. I did this to myself. Well, yeah, Just, whereas right. I whereas I had opportunity to get content for the black and gold banneret, bing, talking to uh, Arlington's Rennell Hall, who's a UCF alumnus, and then mm. oh, oh, thank you, Jim, and also you, somebody you as somebody who resides in Florida, EJ, you would be aware that recently. Uh, Stetson University, the Hatters, recently started their college football uh, program, and a member of that inaugural program won Donald Payne linebacker for the Arlington Renegades. No, we're not binging that. I'm not covering them. I'm just, just mentioning a factoid. Um, I don't have a rewind sound. So just... <laughs> um, it's like awesome. I can deal with it. <laughs> it's called voice acting. Listen, okay? We've already est- established I'm your, uh, what is it, Cooper oh. Rush or Rush Riptide. Riptide Rush, that's me. Riptide Rush. I guess Huckleberry, go ahead. I'm also your Huckleberry, that's right. Um, uh, Johnny Ringo had a better chance in his duels, though, than you do with me. Anyways, so... <laughs> no, but but um, the, the whole... 
uh, and I said this earlier on the podcast I, re- I recorded with uh, Reed uh, Johnson of the Mark Cast on the Student of the Game Pod. Thank you, Jim. Um, if this doesn't exemplify the whole second chance player 54, what have you, of the XFL that we keep hearing about from Danny Garcia and The Rock, I don't know what does. And, and one last thought I'll give. Say what you will about the XFL for those who are non-believers. Listen, I spent the season covering a team that won literally one game and still enjoyed the bejesus out of myself. So take for that what you will, gentlemen. Uh, yeah, I mean, we'll we'll obviously get into the NFL stuff, but I mean the the XFL. I, I can't I can't say I watched every game. I can't say I watched every week, but but what I took in of the product, it was enjoyable. Um, it, it's it's I'm glad to see it was successful. Um, and that I mean, you're already seeing guys from the XFL getting NFL jobs, which is part of I think the purpose of that league. I think we're eleven or twelve deep already. Um, yeah. with, as far as signees from the XFL, and by the way, there will be there will be more connected to the two championship teams, I'm sure, as well as we move on into the next week here with the next set of OTAs coming up soon. Yeah. So, um, yeah, huge. I'm 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 thrilled that 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 it was successful. Um, it looked like it was going to be successful in 2020, um, and and the pandemic derailed that, and and I think it's even bigger and better than it was then. Um, so yeah, it it's. Uh, I'll, I'm looking forward to next year again with it. Uh, like I said, it, it's it's one of those things where I'm not going to guarantee an every week watch or something, but I can also guarantee that that I'm probably going to try and take in a game in DC next year because that looks like a freaking blast. Oh, absolutely! No, dude, I would strongly recommend it. First of all, if I you mean, do, uh, damn it, send a picture of the damn beer snake because I we'll got do. to see that in something other than on TV. Second, um, last thing I'll add in, I talked with the Guardians, uh, Jordan Thomas. Um, tied in, um, yeah, I'll allow it because it was on the student of the game. Um, <laughs> and <Makes> uh, <laughs> and it was funny because I talked to him and I asked him, What is it you would demonstrate to NFL scouts? What were you really hoping to dip, that they see in your game? And he mentioned his versatility. Sure enough, within 10 days of that interview, Jordan Thomas, Denver Broncos. I'm not saying I'm a good luck charm. Oh, the Denver Broncos. Well, hey, say the same for Ben DiNucci, too, man. I mean, yeah. there's a lot of people um, that are going to have, oh, the Denver Broncos in their future, you know. So, I mean, I'm, I'm just rooting for XFL do well. I mean, I'm all for spring football. Um, I just, I, I watch very, very, very little of it. Like, it was on TV and there's nothing going on. I'll probably just have it on the background. But, I mean, what, what I saw was actually pretty cool, though. I will say what I saw is it's, it's I will say it's better than the, the what was the other one uh, the AAF what was the, the one I, the AAF the Alliance of American Football right. I, I think you're kind of I I put them on par I, I'm not here to say that one's better than the other except in that one actually finished the season true you know but um I I will say this again for people that want to poo poo the XFL understand mm-hmm. that the rules committee all the little things the XFL did, the rules committee for various teams in some way, in some fashion, suggested a lot of stuff that you see in the XFL broadcast, right? The Dean Blandino transparency, that was in there. The challenge any play concept, that was in there. I think somebody even submitted for the special teams and the kickoff rules uh, as well. There was a lot of stuff that was uh, submitted in there too. Very encouraging. I don't think we'll see a three-point conversion in the NFL anytime soon. <laughs> but you know, I, I also I, highly, d- I, I highly doubt you're going to see the uh, explanation of the uh, instant replay in the NFL. Personally, you uh, guys, you whether guys, it's uh, being reviewed or not, I, I will. I, I would well, without going too far down the weeds here. I don't mean to hijack your podcast here. No, go ahead, but, but, I mean, you know, you often do with our with your garbage power, power rankings. But true, um, <laughs> I asked for it, so <laughs> I, I think we're closer to that than you do because then all the idiots making the jokes about the NFL is scripted just might go away. A, B, believe it or not, the make it take it take the four and fifteen instead of the onside kick rule. An NFL team actually submitted that for consideration with the rules committee. I, I love I love the fourth and fifteen instead of the onside kick. Um, I actually love the way the XFL does kickoffs. Yeah, uh, same here. as the Beautiful. NFL as well. So, so yeah, there's definitely some things. Because here's the deal: the the way that I think the NFL should be looking at this is the same way 
um, that like I know Major League Baseball has tested out rules in in minor leagues before things get instituted. Major League Baseball, the NHL does the same thing. Like there's there's certain parts of the NHL um, rule changes over the past five ten years that were done in the American Hockey League before. Um, like why wouldn't you test out and and see how things work before it gets to the highest level? It, it's logical. Wow. You know, if they're trying that out there in Hershey, it would be so logical I could hardly bear it. Oh, my God. Wow. 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 Way, I'm going to submit to the committee that the CSI Miami, yeah, drop. Yeah, I should, I should probably make that a thing. Copy. You got a couple months. <laughs> You're good. You got a couple months. Uh, you, gee, have you guys looked into the, uh, the USFL? Um, I haven't simply because I don't have time. At one point, I was exploring working with the blog to cover the uh, the New Orleans uh, team, but um, yeah, I didn't. I, I just couldn't. I, I've put a couple games on in the background, and again, similar similar to to even last year with the USFL. Um, the the football's fine. It, it it's just it's it's never it's never going to be appointment viewing for me the way that college football or the NFL is. Um, of course, of course, sure. Of course. I don't think that's a fair expectation. Yeah. I'll say this though, but, but, but I will say that the calendar Art. makes it easier to watch that one because it's actually that started recently. And yeah, maybe playoffs, like maybe playoffs, angel playoffs are already fitting out games now, amount of games a night. That maybe if you're that much of a sports fanatic, that that's something that could have a, a chance to have some legs. He's going into junior. Yeah, I'm, I'm more likely to put that on on a Sunday afternoon um then you know a old big bang theory rerun you know but in, when, you, when you're in the first month or so of the stanley cup playoffs when there's games at noon three six and ten um you, you're gonna you're gonna have a hard time breaking into that coverage for me i i don't agree with that entirely though because in saying that you're 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 a victim of and prisoner of the moment where the xfl cashed in was the open of their season right the part that's air quotes less significant they rode the wave of the Super Bowl into the beginning of their season, and that showed, right? The season oh, opened yeah. 1.4 million on ABC, right? Now their championship 1.3 million, but that was a single game, right? Mm -hmm. And it's competing with Mother's Day weekend. Um, the sure, NBA absolutely. And, and, playoffs, and the NBA playoffs, whereas it's a wasteland. Um, basically, right after the Super Bowl. No, I'm not counting baseball. I know it's not being played. Yeah, no, and and no, that's I think that's why the XFL is brilliant for starting when they do because people are they're already in by EJ. Uh, they're already in the mindset. I the show. There you go. They're, they're already in the mindset of I watch football on Saturdays. I watch football on Sundays. So we might as well just keep continuing to do that, right? With um, and, and, and you're getting you're getting the fans in the door before the NHL playoffs and the NBA playoffs. So they're already kind of developing this relationship. We're now with the USFL. Yeah. The beginning of their season is competing with uh, the XFL playoffs, um, the NBA playoffs, the NHL playoffs, but like come a couple weeks from now, NBA is going to be done. XFL's done. NHL's done. The only sports is going to be out there is, uh, is is Major League Baseball? So chances are, as, as game, the, but I see what you well, mean. And again, like you're, you're meaningless games. So by the time you're getting to the latter part of the USFL season, they're the only dog in town. That being said, the one thing the XFL can put its claws into there is that USFL squads will pick up XFL retreads. I think on occasion as well. Absolutely, That's absolutely. I think ultimately for spring football to be a thing regularly something that where fans actually look forward to it you, you got to create a habit i think a couple if the, if these leads can hold on hold serve for a couple of years you know people who love football who are fans passionate about a game of football as a whole i oh, think yeah. by say 2027 2028 you can have it where like you look you're not getting nfl numbers nfl is, is, is the king of the world but you can at least get that either. something where people are used to saying okay well i, I miss football but you know i still have this to watch and, and right. you know by 2028 it should be it's all, it's all by habit right no i, I agree right. with and to that same end like let me let me build on your point you're That's talking about hardcores honestly i think i think the hard, the hardcores which is a lot of country like, issues, like I think you'll have I more that you'll have you'll have more football hardcores than you will in any other sport and then moreover and i'm not sure if you're hearing me ej but 
the mm-hmm. the, the concept is that those football hard because I hear, because, I hear yeah. you. I hear you. Okay, because they're greater in number. Um, that's a good group to attack. A, B, establishing the habit. Listen, getting through a single season is a big bleeping deal based on what we've seen with the AAF followed up to your point by the XFL in 2020. So mm-hmm. this is this is good. Well, and I think I think too one of the big things of the XFL, and, and I said it, the 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 yeah, only that yeah that this season kicked off was that when you saw the product in 2020, they didn't have a uniform sponsor or anything like that. It looked like very generic. It looked very basic. Like this year, the team, all the teams are outfitted in Under Armour. I know it sounds like such a, a, a very like simple thing, but it's not. Like everybody, like everybody, sports fans know what un- Under Armour is. Sports fans like recognize that brand. Uh, the uniforms look better. The coaches gear on the sideline it it looked to be a better product even than it did in 2020 yeah i agree um you know so the the presentation was better i think with um obviously the 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 rocks uh celebrity and 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 all of that like it is it is certainly not going to hurt that league in any way shape or form so um you know if if there's one of these leagues when we're talking about even we're talking about like the spring league which people forget has been a thing uh, for quite a while, uh, the AAF, the USFL, the the XFL versions one and two. Um, if there's one that is going to succeed and be around five years from now, ten years from now, I think it's this XFL. Yeah, and I don't feel like they have the arrogance that other leagues did as well. Right. But, you know, so I think there's a lot of good going on there. I agree. Right. 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 Uh, and we'll off season real quick. Um, lots of stuff we could talk about there. I mean, honestly, Aaron, the Aaron Rodgers spectacle that's settled finally. Lamar Jackson that's finally settled. The draft was big deal. Um, I guess the Rodgers thing really. By the way, Lamar Jackson was just at my Chipotle right on the corner of my house like an hour ago. Apparently, corner of my oh. one of my friends. Did kind of did cool he shit. say? Did he say that Kyle tried to tell you but she wouldn't listen? <laughs> um let's go to Aaron Rodgers first. I to tell you but because you that's miss. my man. That's right. <laughs> but I feel like we played we played that bit a lot less as the season went on. Does that mean you were wrong more often than Kyle at the end of the year? No, it means you started paying more attention and stopped arguing with me. <laughs> that, that, that's never gonna ha- you know that's never gonna happen. Come on. No, I actually yeah. honestly the, the the there's um as a season, first of all, you know why you heard it less, EJ? And and I still haven't managed to do this yet. I actually want to get somebody from a betting show on, on my show or any of our shows for that matter to talk about life trying to bet this past damn season in the NFL. Cause boy, that ish was all over the place. Oh, it's yeah. not as much as 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 I was right more or anything like that. Everybody was wrong more. And listen, at some point. I have to be sympathetic to the crowd and be like, I tried to tell you. Stand there in your wrongness and be wrong and get used to it. And all of us did that, Jim. Okay. All of us. Yeah, damn right we did. <laughs> I was right about the I Raise your hand right now if you had the Jacksonville Jaguars winning the goddamn AFC South. Shut up. No, you didn't. <laughs> Last year, no. Who? I mean, who? and who would? Honestly. I got, this, I got this coming here, though. That's why you run away. Says, that's why Duval said it was always the Jags this year. Right? I, 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 I was, I, I, I will say that I was wrong. Or I was right about the uh, coach of the year, though. This is a record. No, you're not. You're still wrong. You're still no. The, I, okay. I, I mean, the, 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 the award him. Talk to the. Talk you to correctly the predicted how the award was presented, but you are all wrong. Yeah, correct. No, like nobody wore clown masks. Don't they look at me. I didn't. I didn't. I don't have a vote. No, 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 no. You don't get to say, don't look at me yeah. after you tell me you about get on the bandwagon. You're just as wrong as they are. Jump hey, by on. the way, side note, Patrick LeVon Mahomes II, not the actual MVP either. A Giants, an actual Giants fan would support me voting for Saquon Barkley as thus. But, you know, the media, right? Anyway. He, he, he was still in the game's uh, MVP this year. Uh, this is true. I mean, I'm, I tried to tell you, but you wouldn't listen. Anyway, uh, Rogers, <laughs> Rogers to the Jets. 
Um, that's another I tried to tell you, but you wouldn't listen. I mean, well, not, what, not him you, going there or not, oh. not, not you, but like when the media started going, I don't know, they haven't signed the deal yet, child, please. Oh, if it, if it, look, if, if it, the minute he said he's intended to go to the Jets, that thing was going to go through. There's no way in hell that you get that far and that then wasn't the it first just crashed indicator. and burns. That wasn't the first indicator, actually. You're right, but that wasn't the mm-hmm. first indicator. What was, I'll give you guys a chance to guess. What was the first actual indicator? That's Wait, wasn't it Hackett getting the job? Ding! There's the man. Nathaniel, I, only, I only say that because I've heard you say it enough times. Fair enough. The revival of Nathaniel yeah. Hackett is the reason we knew Aaron Rodgers was going to go there. There's no other reason you keep that mf with a job. Period. Point blank. Right. End of story. By the way, as much as we've talked about on the Huddle, Huddle Up Bink podcast, bing, uh, that was a garbage bell. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's why Call I'm not the starter. Podcast. <laughs> that's, that's that's not that, that's why I'm not the starter. I, I completely blew that bell. But we've gone on and on and speculated about whether or not the 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 Jets are gonna be this or that and the other thing. You really want to know the biggest obstacle in the Jets making the playoffs in general, let alone being successful in playoffs in question. It's not even. A guy who's in division. It's Kenny Pickett. Because if the Jets don't win that division, which I don't think they will necessarily. They might. I don't think they will. They have Uh to get past the Steelers to get a wild card. And that's not a given. I mean, the thing thing that I've said is this. I, I think that the two teams that we know are clear cut at the top of the AFC. Again, we're sitting here May middle of May. Reserve the right to adjust our opinion. Yes. Is Kansas City and Cincinnati. Of course. Beyond that, I think that there there are a lot of spots in play. Because I don't like I, I will still stand firm that Buffalo is not a lock as the division winner. Can we can we go ahead and pencil in the Jags is winning the South here in May. I'll pencil them in. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, you Not know, yeah. just yeah, let's, my default almost. Right. Yeah. And, 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 and there's still time for that to 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 go to Hades. I get it. Yeah. I mean, but, other other teams, yeah, other teams around them in in in, in division. And, Hon- and honestly, that's uh, that's probably the easiest bet of the AFC. If we're looking at a bet like that. They're, they're the most obvious division winner of the of the, of the entire conference. Honestly, even more than Chiefs and the. Uh, um, Bengals, because at least there's less friction in that division. I'm not prepared to say they're more of a lock than the Chiefs. I'm not. Um, the Sean yeah. Payton thing is is cute, um, but no. Um, Chargers be chargering, so there's that. And, you know, Kellen Moore is going to save the day there with EJ's favorite head coach. Mm-hmm. No. Um and and the listen, I like the Raiders, and I like that they got Garoppolo uh, as a quick fix patch job there in Las Vegas. But no, so for me, Patrick Levon Mahomes the second is still the biggest lock. But after that, yeah, it's sunshine because as much as I like Joey Burr, the AFC North, good oh, it's God, it's gonna be a dogfight. It's gonna be a dogfight. The only like, reason they're not gonna have three teams in there is because somebody's gonna beat each other up, right, Jim? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I think I think we can safely lock the Bengals in is that I mean, a playoff team, Sure. whether that whether they are division winner or not will remain to be seen. And I think you pencil them in as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, Jacksonville, you know, we, we, we talked on the Huddle Up podcast the other week about how they didn't have <laughs> what a professional the, the greatest draft, you know, out of out of the league or anything like that. So there's potential for movement around them, but I think they're still the best team in that division until proven otherwise. But but again, with with the Jets, I think everything else is wide open. I mean, you're 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 propping up uh, Lamar Jackson with what did what did Mike call him? Old Bones Junior. <laughs> um, you know, and and then you know the Steelers. I mean, the the Steelers are going to be a an improved team for sure uh, in Pickett's second year. Um, you got to think they're going to make a run at the playoffs. Um, you know, Miami's going to be in the mix and New England should probably be in the mix. 
Um, so th- th- there's a lot of teams that are going to be vying for playoff spots, but I think the Jets are going to be right there in the mix again. Like I go back to they they beat the Bills once last year with I don't know name which crappy quarterback started that week. I don't even I couldn't tell you. They didn't have Mike White in yet that I can tell. But there, but that was that that was that that was the Zach Wilson game actually. Yes, yeah. Like none of those guys are as good as even where Aaron Rodgers is today. So. I still think he makes them better. They have to repeat, um, you know, rookie performances and hope that these guys continue to develop and get better. Um, if they can make it happen, then who knows? First and of all, is, quick side ahead. note, um, Old Bones Jr. is not Lamar Jackson. It is, in fact, Odell Beckham Jr. So Yes, right. yeah, sorry. The, 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 the other old EJ. That's the glorious receiver signing that they uh, – which – Sadly to say, is probably the best receiver weapon that uh, Lamar Jackson has ever had. But that's that's a Baltimore problem, not not a me problem. Although Zay Flowers will be up there, right? Sure, He's sure. But, a, a, a a great draft pick for sure. An immediate this, upgrade over Hollywood Brown. Go ahead, EJ. But, but this is why also, and I, I know Jim's going to hate this shit. When I, and I said last week, I said on the podcast on Saturday, <laughs> that everything everything you said there is accurate, and it's why I said for the Jets especially. That that week one game is a must win. Oh, for everything you just said there is highlighting why it's a must win. Obviously, yes, week one. We got some, some using the term must win. I'm just saying that like, I firmly believe that a lot of these these matchups, a lot of these a lot of these matchups are going to come down to tiebreakers. You want to bake those in early. I you mean, first to? off, I think the best way to to avoid, I, I think the wild card races will be more to be nuttier than the, the division races, honestly. In the AFC, so, absolutely. Yeah, so, you, you, so you're going to want to win a division. I mean, the, the, the easiest pass is to win a division. Just win a division, call it a day. So you beat the Bills, who's probably the favorite, so we will say the favorites in that division. Week one out, out the gate. That's a must win. No, it is not a must win. It is a want to win. There is no such thing as a must win in week one. Correct. No such fucking thing. None. Like, do games do games in the NFL matter more than a uh, opening? Without question. Than an opening weekend series in Major League Baseball? Absolutely. But there is no such thing as a must The only game. thing I'll oh, give God. you, Jim, on that. Uh, wait, wait. Kyle, the only thing I'll give you on that, Jim, for, to your point there, is that the extra game now, the, the 17th game now, does water it down slightly, to your point. <laughs> even, even, in a, even in a 16-game season, there was no such thing as a must win in week one. No such thing. <laughs> See, I can't get mad at that point because he's still clinging to his bullshit, but he's actually right. If you want to say, if you want to say, there's a must-win game in college football week one, I can believe you. Well, the depending, football, on, it's, depending it's, on the team, college football writes right itself. You, you can't depending lose on the way. team, though. No, apparently not, because apparently you can get trounced by a team and still matter later, right? Don't Notre Dame fan, anyways. But depending no. on school, of course. <laughs> what, what does Notre Dame have to do with it? <laughs> a lot. <laughs> Didn't they get trounced early in the year and then still end up ranked somehow? I don't know. Maybe ranked, I'm sure, but they weren't in a playoff when they lost. Playoffs? No. What is that? No. What is that? They playoff. were just credible enough to propel another team into a playoff. Anyways, don't uh, you see you and your damn Notre Dame? So what, wait, are you talking the Buckeyes? Because your your boy and my boy Joel Klatt would have had them winning the national title had it not been for the injury to Marvin Harrison Senior. So no, well, first of all, he's right. Second, he's absolutely uh, right. So. He, he's right. He's right. He ain't lying. He ain't lying. He's right. <laughs> Again, that, that's that's a play-in tournament game. An actual must-win, if you need an example. But we need to be careful because there are other must-win games because the Sixer season was over so early in October. That's different. That that's an 82 game win. sample. What's we'll about 82 versus 17? That is wrong, is Kyle. Disgusting. That is so wrong. I can't leave that to me. Awesome. <laughs> But, that was for uh, you, Matt Mulheisen. Boom. But, but, Give but, me but the bell, Jim. But, but 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 that being said, though, that being said, um, so like maybe we all agree on this one. They're not Super Bowl contenders just yet. I don't know why the cricket. They're, they're definitely playoff contenders, though. Uh, yeah. oh, playoff contenders. We're talking about the Jets still. Um, yeah. I don't. Th- yeah. No, I don't think anybody's arguing that they were playoff contenders last year. So what you're telling me is they didn't. They made a lateral move to bring in a- uh, Ayahuasca, aka Aaron Charles Rogers. You're welcome, Jim. Mr. Mr. Emanized. What's that? <laughs> Kyle's Jim's favorite guy in the whole world. Um, now you, I know you, you hate that take I made on the Hull Love podcast back in February, I think it was, where I said that uh the where, where's their ceiling? 
and I said that their ceiling could be yeah, the, the AFC AFC game. is just asinine. That that's bro, you, you can't. You can't, you know. Forget forget about all the other points. But I we, showed you the way together, though. I showed you the way. It was still He's wrong. Not. Um, but, but we, we won't belabor the points that that our dude Mikey Byrne kept wanting to beat you over the head with. That's that's not where the issue is, honestly. We can get into the regular season and that's all cute. Which was um, no, we're not doing that. I said, we're not going to do that. That's why I said, we're not going to do that. I know you're the host, but I'm laying the law there. What I'm telling you is this. All I need is the look at Aaron uh, Charles Rogers in the playoffs the past three seasons. I'll wait. Yeah, the reason why I'm waiting is you're still trying to find something significant he did. He got beat twice by the Niners. True. Who were, I mean, who were a better team? It wasn't just that they were a better team, Jim. It's just they rendered whatever Aaron Rodgers can do irrelevant because the defense thus dominated and the offense kept the ball. So where Aaron Charles Rodgers couldn't be dominant if he wanted to because he was kept off the field. And then the whole thing against the Bucks. well, <laughs> anyways, I'm not one to call somebody a choke artist, but man, that was pr- as about as close Pretty to damn close. Pretty damn close. Pretty damn close. Lamar yeah, Jackson. That's your boy there. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> Lamar Jackson, are you glad that thing's over? He won. By the way, he won the standoff. Oh, now, now suddenly we're declaring him a winner. That's funny. The world at large was trying to tell me how he was losing that exchange this time last month. Isn't that <laughs> funny? I tried to tell you, but you wouldn't listen. But to to the point made too, I think Jalen Hurts' contract had a lot to do with that as well. And, and yeah, you know, I think Jalen Hurts is yeah. Um, and, and I listen. I ain't mad at it. It's not so much that I think it's over as much as the resolution. Um, left both sides relatively happy. This is what compromise looks like, and the the lame stream did what they did with it because the unfortunate thing about negotiations like that is it happens at a slow news time. Nobody gives a damn about baseball, and this is proof of that. That this was the top story, even while they're playing baseball games, as you want to call them. So, yeah, man, I'm gonna be in real trouble if they open a team here in Orlando. Damn it. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe get baseball very soon, though. That's what I mean. Baseball. If yeah. they get baseball here, I'm in big trouble. <laughs> I feel like it's more when than if at this point. Yeah. Shut the filthy. Pat Williams, Williams baby. Let's go. Pat Williams. <laughs> <laughs> Jim, um, you, you agree that Lamar won that battle, too? Yeah. I mean, he, he got paid. That's what he wanted. Um, He got paid. He's He's in an organization that he likes. I, I but I, I don't mean to interrupt him, but I would take issue of, of calling him a winner. I, I I I feel like the Ravens got the better price than they would have. Ravens won too. I mean, by the way, that's like I, 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 yeah. I don't I don't I don't think it, it's not a mutually exclusive. It's not a it's not a Lamar or I think it's a Lamar and yeah. I think yeah, both sides won here. The fans won. You know, I mean, there's there's certainly. Awesome. <laughs> there, you know, there's certainly gonna there's certainly fans that probably need to backtrack on some of the things they said about Lamar Jackson over the last whoa, whoa, yeah, whoa. <laughs> over the last month of, of his uh yeah, the end of the, uh, what looked to be the end of his tenure in, in, in Baltimore. Like I know there was a lot of people that were just kind of fed up a little bit, but it's you like, know what? There's all frustration though, the fan. You know, I gotta get yeah, it. I, I mean it's, it's valid and in fanatic, just as they should. Yeah, it's not it's not an invalid complaint, but you know maybe they are apologizing a little bit at this point, and and that's fine. We all do that. Um, and, but yeah, I think I think everybody won, and and um, they're they're giving him some old and busted weapons. They got him some new weapons. Um, you know, and and honestly, like here's the deal, and it's the same thing as the Aaron Rodgers deal in New York. It was the same thing with Matthew Stafford and the Rams. When everybody said they're giving up, the Rams are giving up way too much, and then a year later they went, "Fuck you, we won the Super Bowl." Like, <laughs> like if the Jets end up winning the Super Bowl as with Aaron Rodgers as quarterback, everything they gave up to get there doesn't freaking matter. Um, if you know, if if Lamar and the Ravens I mean, win the goal, Super Bowl, well, right, but th- but that's my point. It's like people want to get mad and everything, but if if Lamar wins the Super Bowl uh, over the course of this contract or or his tenure with the Ravens. Every one of those fans that was ready to run him out of town is going to be buying his Super Bowl freaking jersey. Oh, so, so very accurate. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean. Right. So, so he'll pull like a Chad Johnson and change his name, like he changed it to Chad right. Ochocinco. I wonder if Lamar Jackson would change his name to CeeLo Green. <laughs> right. Like you know, it's so like yeah, it's it's 
these these deals and and all uh, of the, just got it. <laughs> well, that's his internet delay. It's not that he was thinking Sorry about, about it. it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, the 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 winners and losers of deals don't. I don't think it determined when the deals are done. It's when the contracts expire. That's when we can determine if there's a winner or a loser. Agreed. I mean, that's that's Fair the difference point. between you know Aaron Donald and Aaron Charles Donald. I get right. it. <laughs> right. Um, I, I, I'm getting a lot of mixed feel. That's more mostly negative feedback on the whole D Daniel Jones deal, though. Of course, because and, he didn't really do anything to deserve a deal that big, right? But I understood, <laughs> like, if you, if you look at the language of the contract, it makes sense, though. Like, you lock him up. It's really a two-year deal if you think about it. It's, it's really a two-year, yeah, eighty million dollar deal. It, it doesn't make him a lame duck this year, right? So. So that that in and of itself, I guess, is 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 probably a I hate to use this word based on what we just said, but a quote unquote win for him and the Giants is you don't right. have a quarterback that that's that's a that's a lame duck trying you know every every bad throw every you know uh, poorly timed interception doesn't get evaluated on the is this the throw that ended his career in New I love well timed interceptions. <laughs> Those are my favorite well timed right. interceptions. That's a thing. Yeah, like but but you know what I mean? The, the, a interception on the second throw of the game is a lot less impactful than the you with with a minute and a half to go when you're trying to mount a three point comp, you know, you're down by 3 and you need to at least get a field goal. Like throwing um, interception in the red zone is bad. Right. Right. So so you, you you know now that he's locked in for two maybe four years or whatever it was uh you're every not everything is going to be scrutinized on the well this means he's not going to be back in new york next year um so i i think the giants did what they have to do um you get to extend because you know you did have a first year head coach this year and jones did seem to take somewhat of a step forward um so now you get a chance to evaluate that on a little bit larger sample before you decide, okay, this is definitely our guy, or eh, then maybe this isn't working out. We'll go a different way. I and think one thing we have to add into to provide the, the proper context of why the fans are skittish about it, he got a contract while they franchised Saquon. I think that has a big part of it. You know, now granted, fans don't understand the nuance of the running back position, such in its decline by way of one Le'Veon Bell in the with the Jets, right? And I talked about that quite a bit on the Irish NFL show when I was ta talking with Colum Corum. Bing. Um, thank you, Jim. Um, I've gone cosmopolitan. I'm international, baby. Anyway, <laughs> um, you know. Th by the way, I I I I gave them the luxury of actually pronouncing a soft th with a th instead of a t. You know. Because it's nice. three instead of three, nice. right? And there you go. So they, they, you know, they enjoyed that. <laughs> but uh, let's say Caribbean. Say tree. Oh, tree, tree, tree times, EJ. I told tree you time day. Time. Tree time day. <laughs> no, but um, that was an interesting segue. But the, I, I think that concept that those things are happening right together is part of it. And, and I'll say this in defense of 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 the dimes, um. His receiver core being completely wrecked to the to the extent that it was, I think may have had a contribution to why the interception number was as high as it too was. His touchdown to interception ratio was awful and didn't warrant the contract if you're looking strictly at the numbers. To be thoroughly objective, you have to at least account for the fact that they're baking in um, improvements via chemistry in the upcoming camp. Whether that'll transpire, whole other question. But I, I'm trying to kind of lend myself to the positive there and, and, right. and acknowledging and, it as a possibility. And I think also they uh, try to they avoid the potential Lamar thing. Let, let's say they franchise him another year, and then let's say Daniel Jones hypothetically has a career year where he's like throws three you touchdowns, can, ten interceptions. Thing, not the yeah, right now. Now you get a situation where that price tag, oh, you know, yesterday's price and today's price. Now right. forty million towards the fifty million now, you know what I'm saying? So you, you get ahead of that by you, you get ahead of that potential too. So you lock. It, it's kind of like a, a, a sort of like a franchise because it, yes, it's a four year one forty deal, but it's really a two year eighty million deal. That we look at the uh, the numbers, look at the actual language of the contract. So I I, th I, think, I think it was a good deal, and I think once you explain to to certain fans who doesn't really follow football in that same way, they just see four years one forty, you're like, what the fuck? They just see what the 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 media yeah. reports in exactly. that line. 
Yeah. Right. And because, and, and, and with, I don't mean this to just trash the lame stream, although they often deserve it. Yes. Contracts are complicated enough now to where you can't really capture the essence of the headline. And, and you know, right. they still, they still report the contract in terms of its maximum value to satisfy the agents, right? That doesn't do a damn thing to actually report the actual compensation right. guaranteed and what it'll actually translate to to the player. I can say, hey, EJ, every time I appear on your podcast, you get $14 million unless you say something stupid. I'm going to report I have $14 million opportunity for you, but you're never actually going to get paid. So, <laughs> Dick. <laughs> I'm awful. You are awful. Wow. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask something here. Uh, that uh, well, I'm, I said this actually on with Zach, and I'll, I'll ask you guys real quick. I'm strangely interested in the NFC North next year. Oh no, it's compelling stuff. It's, it's a fascinating division action next year. The power vacuum's yeah. gone, right? And I feel like, look, I, if you ask anybody, they're gonna they're gonna say, well, Detroit's probably the favorite next year. And yet, I feel like Detroit maybe is a little overvalued, a, a slightly overvalued. Going into okay. next year. That doesn't mean they're not the favorites. I mean, I, I would still say the Vikings still like slight favorites still in that division, right? Well, and and first of all, this isn't necessarily a bad take by you. I, I love how right. they drafted to accommodate the disappearance of Thalen in, in, in the same way they, they drafted a few years back one Justin Jefferson to account for the departure of Stephon Dix. Correct. If they do maintain that, they still have solid weapons. Dalvin Cook um, actually stayed healthy for most of the year, so, you know, they have a roster that's good. It all falls upon one Kirk Coupons. That and their defense, if it can be improved, may make them a better team. But you know, I know they were complete and total damn foos gold last year. Whereas we could see a structured improvement in the lines throughout the season. Okay, okay. 13, 4, and minus 5. Yeah. And, and there were times throughout the year where they were the best offense scoring wise in the league and say what you will about their draft. It wasn't my favorite, certainly, but Gibbs definitely gives them an extra weapon to make that offense even more potent. And they eventually got around to picking a good defensive pick here or there to keep their draft from being complete. But, but um, yeah, I, I, I think the lions did enough to improve. Um, I don't love what they're doing at quarterback in uh, green Bay. Um, and, uh, oh yeah, sorry. Bing. Um, and, and, Thank you. And then um uh, Bears, <laughs> they're still in hibernation right now. So you know. Yeah, but, but I feel like the 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 floor. I mean, I know look, I know last year, look, Minnesota's fool's goal last year, 13 4, but a minus minus five point differential, of course, though. Negative five anyway. You know, Detroit is still Detroit. I mean, they're improved. The the full the, the ceiling's been dropped yeah. to where I feel like this year, if you win nine games. You might win the division, and I feel like oh the yeah, sure, dropped, sure. You got to at least consider Chicago and Chicago and uh, Green Bay as something that can okay. Let's see what, what, what see. No, let's I see don't. what we see. Well, no, no, I don't. Why, why do I have to? No, I don't. No, I don't. But why? Why should I consider Jordan Love at all? He's given me nothing to work with. So he's, no. a, he's a great unknown. I shouldn't. I don't need to give him consideration. Well, I, I well. Uh, I appreciate he could, he could be good. He could be I, really good. I he could also be terrible. Yeah, I appreciate your optimism, but let's be real. If he was that good, they'd have cut they would have cut Rogers out some time ago. You know, that has to be a thing. For all the difficulty he was, if love was worth a damn, Rogers would not have gotten another contract in that fifty million dollar thing that we know that he got, right? So that uh, no, I, I I can't that that's enough evidence right now to where I can at least say that love is below average. Okay, Fields, listen, I like Justin Fields. I still think he has the opportunity with time to become the best Bears quarterback in franchise history. Low bar, but this ain't that year. I think they still need more. And um, as as far listen listen, of course, Kirk Coopins is a dude that was outperformed by Case Keenum. You're going to scoff at golf? I'm saying. <laughs> you know, that scoff at golf thing has gotten a lot of legs. A lot of legs. What, six years now? What can I say except? At least. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, listen. Play all the hits tonight, baby. <laughs> I would have a lot more with Griffin for Griffin, but he got hurt. I'm still ticked about that. 
Hey, hey, I'm getting, plenty old- on, I'm getting plenty on getting clever for Trevor, baby. Woo! <laughs> so, like, the, the, the NFC is a hold. The NFC is a hold, honestly. It's interesting. Like, you know, obviously, you, it's top heavy. It's Philadelphia, San Francisco. I'll mm-hmm. throw in Dallas because they'll, they'll, they'll still play. Don't team. throw in Dallas. He's a cowboy Why? fan. He's gonna Damn, throw don't, don't, don't do that. Don't 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 no, don't be the fan. Don't be no. fanboy now. Like no. I don't trust. Look, 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 this isn't this isn't this isn't November, Jim, with in my relationship with the Cowboys. Okay, but th- this is this is a reality. The the Dallas actually, Cowboys. Actually, no. Actually, November, November, Jim is actually now May. Jim now the, is different different forms now. The, the, the Dallas Twitter, Cowboys. Twitter. He <laughs> gets, he's right about this. In November, he's like, oh, I could, okay, maybe it'll, damn it. The, the, the Dallas Cowboys right now are not on the level of Philly and San Francisco. No, no, they're, I agree with that. They're not. But the playoff it, team. It's Philly, it's San Francisco, and it's everybody else. If you want to put the Cowboys at the top of tier B, I can sign off on that. Yeah, that's, that's what I mean. Because I don't, I, I, I think t- tier B is very shallow, and then there's a lot of other teams, and then there's some bad teams. Yeah. I mean, it, it, you, you want a hot take? There, here's a hot take for you. Here's what I'll throw you, EJ, so you don't feel so alone with your hot takes, right? I love hot. I love hot takes because of the way the coach has acted since the departure of his quarterback. Pete Carroll has drafted better in the past two seasons than basically his entire career in Seattle, just to spite Russell Carrington Wilson. I believe the Seahawks have the opportunity to be the third best team. I could probably sign off on that if we're being honest about it. Well, don't be deceitful, bitch. <laughs> um, you know, but yeah, it, it, it's so. No, yeah. I think that third spot in the NFC is wide open. I think. I mean, they can't. No, get no, no. I, I, I'm just saying, look, if you look at playoff teams in the NFC, like right playoff. Yeah, go ahead. I didn't say third seed. I said third best, right? Because they can't get the third seed. Because if the Niners are going to win that division, which they may not, they're figuring out their quarterback situation. Right. Yeah, the quarterbacks not, question mark. Coach. They, they, they got to bring in a different defensive coach. We don't know who whoever's replacing D'Amico is going to do the job, right? You know, yeah, so third best team, not the third seat. But if they win the North, or excuse me, the West, they'll be the second seed, right? The NFC West leaders are the second seed. That's what I'm saying, regardless of who it is. Yeah, I'll agree with that for sure. Yeah, without question. Without question, because the South is hot garbage. Oh my god! Um, we, who the hell keeps putting stock in the foul? You people need to learn about the damn fraud cons. What the oh hell god, is it with it, you it people? Saints or, Saints or bus? It's Saints or bus. Well, uh, you know what? No, I, here's my next one. I'm proud for Stroud, baby. They made enough upgrades. If they stay healthy on offense with Adam Thielen and all the other dudes, dudes I think CBS Sports had them as a win division. Okay, is that improbable? I'm just saying, because I don't think Kamara's going to be back in full form, right? I mean, even if it's, it's Saints back, or bust for me, I think, right at this point. Yeah, you, you, it's 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 the fraud cons or Baker at that point, and I'd make the argument right. that Baker and company, because he has a better roster on offense, is the bigger threat. Yeah, the, I mean the the only the only other team that even, I mean, has any potential to make noise would be Carolina, and I I don't like. He's proud for Stroud. Boom. Like I, yeah, like I just, I, I oh, don't. No, wait, wait. You're hung for young. I got it wrong. My bad. Yes, I was going to say proud for Stroud would be in. in, in, uh, in Houston. I said it wrong. Um, yeah. But yeah, uh, which, I mean. <laughs> His eyes got up. They've, been here and, they've, they've, they've had their best. <laughs> Houston's had their best offseason <laughs> in a long time, but they're still a long ways off. But but Carolina is is a team that, you know, if, if I mean, Bryce Young I, I is that to me is the better quarterback and they made the right choice. Um, you know, if they can make a quick turnaround there, we'll, we'll see because the South is wide open. Um, but yeah, I think the saints have to be, when we're talking in, in the AFC about teams that have to be penciled in and whatnot, the, the saints are that team in the, in the NFC South. For now, we're not, we're not, even, we're not even halftime yet. And Jokic has 15 points, 15 rebounds, five assists and two blocks. It's God, the altitude. The <laughs> oh my That's god, so who sick. the hell cares? That is so sick. Like, this kid is amazing. Anyway, no, no, no. Um, NFC is like it's it's wide open. You have like two, three teams, maybe a fourth team in Seattle, default Saints, probably with division, 
default where the north is and then it's everybody else a crap shoot well, there is a north in the default i mean though i don't agree with you for the vikings they'll compete for it so i think it's a two-team race i'll give you that yeah. i don't know if, if i'm picking a division winner next year I'm, i I think I'll, I'll i'll probably go with detroit i'm just saying that it's, the vikings will probably the odds on favorite what though. the hell are you griping about <laughs> no, I, i'm saying they're a little overvalued that's all Come on. Yeah. well uh, then then i guess what i'm saying is it, the Lions are overvalued. So, too, are the Vikings. I mean, we're dealing with a lot of overrated there. That's fine. Sure. Wow. Agreement. It got silent up in this bitch. Yeah, that's doesn't happen much here. I mean, once we finally translate EJ's uh, murmurings into a coherent thought, you get... <laughs> I'm awful. I'm so sorry. That is a disgusting act. <laughs> it really was. I deserve that. Uh, you know what? I that should, is a disgusting I, act. I should Joe Buck myself. That's what I, I should. <laughs> yeah, Joe, Joe Buck, Buck yourself. yourself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any other NFL things that we want to touch on? Um, I'm got to. Um, you know, things here. Nothing else here. The draft. I mean, the draft was okay. For your, uh, oh, yeah, the, the, I don't feel like anybody had an outright awful, terrible draft. We could complain about Detroit, but I, I think they're in a position too where they can make us all look potentially silly today. Um, we just won't know it for a while if they have. Right. That's the nature of the draft, such that it is. Um, I would, I would move to draw attention to this. Um, I think the NFC East sends only two teams tops to the playoffs this year. Um, I think Dallas the Giants, and, uh, Philly. Yeah, I, I think the Giants are going to take a step back. Okay. Uh, yep. I think Brian Dayball will be exposed as the overrated wonder he is. Yeah. Uh, Relax. Watch, watch your mouth. Watch your mouth. What are you worried about, Cowboys fan? This falls watch right your team. mouth. Well, here's the thing. Is it? Oh, sorry, Chiefs fan. My bad. Let me, yeah, let me, but is it? Is it the Giants taking a step back or is it the rest of the NFC actually taking a step up it, because here's the thing like yeah the giants out kicked their coverage but the i think there was a lot of teams in the nfc last year that um th that kind of failed to meet the challenges at times that kind of gave the giants the the in that they may or may not have. Mean, like the packers yeah no absolutely yeah, they, got all, they got all breaks last year absolutely but i think uh, yeah i think i think there's going to be more reality than luck this year maybe for the giants well and there'll be certain games that went their way that won't necessarily this yeah, year it's the balance like, of life the win the win in jacksonville that they got on the strength of jamal agnew fumbling the ball out the back of the end zone at near the half you know that ended up being the difference in the game they don't have that w now what does right. that do to the seed? I'm too lazy to look it up right now, but it's little bounces of the ball like that. Like, you know, yeah. um, um, that being said, who I think will take their spot in the playoffs, obviously I'm leaning towards Detroit, right? As a wild yeah. card goes, unless they win the division. Then I guess I'm saying it's the Vikings, right? Yeah, I think one of those teams in the North. Remember yeah. the North, bitches. <laughs> uh, let's, let's move on to uh, some sports media talk real quick. Uh, uh, Pat McAfee. It came out today finally that he is agreeing to a deal with ESPN. No num no word numbers yet though, but it's an eight figure deal apparently. I a mean, a lot of money. You're you're money. not you're not moving what his deal was previously to ESPN for not a lot of money. Right, I mean, because right. he had a lot of stuff um, going with FanDuel and and yeah. everything he was doing, it had to be that big for this. Yeah, to his happen. his so his, his FanDuel uh, contract was four years, one twenty. Yeah, yeah. Um, you're not moving for less than that. Lots of mixed feelings about this. You know, obviously McAfee has, has done this in a different space for the last couple of years. He, you know, he's kind of changed the game a little bit with how sports, how sports talk radio is these days, and a lot more looser language and whatnot. And people like that, and people kind of shocked that ESPN is really to dive into this thing. So, in, in relation to that, EJ, when you saw his deal, did you say, "Holy fuck"? <laughs> um. <laughs> Shit yeah. <laughs> Shit yeah. That's good. That's a good I like that answer. Um fuck yeah. Yeah, there you go. I mean But no, I, I, I'm surprised. Okay, I'll say this. I'm surprised that ESPN went this route, and I'm also not surprised that ESPN went this route. Um, I mean, they already had McAfee in house for college game day. Right. Um, you know, so 
I, I think it makes sense to to kind of bring everything under the umbrella, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think the the huge thing, and and we have to go by what we've been told right now, right? And in his like video announcement today, he's basically like, "Look, nothing's changing. It's just where we're doing it that that is changing." Um, and I certainly hope that's the case, uh, because look, I, I don't. He is not. His show is not something I absorb. Um, on a daily basis, uh, I will see clips on YouTube or I'll see clips on Instagram and stuff like that. Right. Um, his interviews with Brock Lesnar, Vince McMahon, like I, I watched and listened to those in full um, and they are fantastic. Yeah. Um, I mean, he is he and his team are fantastic at what they do. So um, it is it is my sincere hope that ESPN isn't dumb enough to fuck this up. Um, and and change what what they have. Uh, that is that's why I said <laughs> you, you say that, and then kind of like uh, yeah. That, that's why I said hope because it's it's entirely possible that they do, or that like after a year or so they start to go. We eh, maybe uh, maybe we can try changing. Uh, just try changing this a little bit. Like let's see, <laughs> let's just change this a little bit, and then you know, and and the minute you kind of, the minute you kind of like open that door a little bit. That there's no closing the door again. See, here's the thing, Jim. Uh, and this is what I love about you, buddy, and, and why I'm glad you do your pods on a regular basis, whether it be Huddle Up Podcast, bing, whether it be, you know, uh, Three Count Thursday, bing, or any of the wonderful family that we have there at Huddle Up Inc. in general, bing. They get to see you as the real man you are and not the pit of despair that is your Twitter account. Okay, like the world's on fire and everybody who refs against my team and Matt Muleheisen's team are out to kill us. However, they call something in our favor. It's 100 percent correct. But you're getting it. But (laughs) but I say all of you. Oh, God. That being said, um, I'll leave with this. It was was it. This guy gets it. (laughs) I'll leave with this. I think Pat McAfee is the best of intentions and has been a man to his word as far as the coverage and the content to this point. I also very strongly believe, and granted, this is just me observing him in person um, up close for just a handshake and from afar at two different Super Bowls, for both for Atlanta and Los Angeles. This guy is a people's champion, which is appropriate for somebody who covers wrestling as often as he does. Um, and God damn it, he's good on that venue. And I'm not even a wrestling guy. I just know he's the right type. Um, love him on game day, too. The writing on the wall for this to to somehow happen, you have to do it kind of in hindsight in a way like you would watch a Game of Thrones show. The, 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 the desire was obviously there from ESPN's first effort to do business with Barstool, which to this day I still love that that fell on its stupid face. Um, Me too. Yes, I'm throwing shade at Barstool. Like they have a TikTok yeah. about them uh, that shows the call of them getting canceled. Yeah, please uh, don't stop. I will let you do that all day, every day. Yeah, like I, I yeah, mean, does it make you a horrible person to to laugh at somebody's misery? Probably. Am I worried about it? Fuck no. And Pat McAfee means I can say that. Anyways, uh, <laughs> but um. I think McAfee is actually the correct answer in that. But Kyle, the mouse is going to stop him. In the past, you have a point. Here's the, here's the evidence of the anomaly. Here's the environment for the change. We live in a world, gentlemen. In a world. In a world where Disney Plus <laughs> exists, where your child can watch princesses, and pirates, and cartoons with mice. There's also a world where you have Deadpool on demand. And I think Pat McAfee is that Deadpool offering for sport. It sounds to me it's, a, it's, it's close to a licensing deal, though, because I, I think what they're going to do, they're going to broadcast two hours of the show on the YouTube and on ESPN. It'll be the lead-in after first take. Um, and then the yeah, last hour will be yeah, just strictly yeah. YouTube, right? It's get up which, and take. You're right. Yeah, so that that's kind of what it is. Um, I mean, I know he spoke about about this on a show a couple days ago about like you know wanting to be controlled, full control of his content. I totally agree with him. You know, having control of your content is number one, number one key. 
And I think they he would not sign this deal if he did not have control of his content. By the way, I think and I, and I think ESPN is pivoting now. I think ESPN is seeing now the fracturing that more people now are less likely to listen to like cookie cutter sports media, sports talk radio. Well, that and the last time somebody went to them for control of their content, that was a major show host. And they said, no, what happened? He went to the competition. And of course, I referred to when Colin Cowherd, right? That's how they lost the herd is he went to them and said, I wanted to do a list of things. And this isn't, by the way, inside information. This isn't me being a journalist, although I did that a little bit lately when I was covering the Orlando Guardians. Uh, and, you know, not to name drop, but I was on the phone with a uh, a uh, Orlando Sentinel reporter today uh, about how <laughs> how UCF is now just as valid as FSU in terms of money deals are. <laughs> Take that, Noler. Yeah, so I saw that article we put, put in our group text. I saw that. I mean, the Barbarians are at the gate for the ACC. Listen, I make fun of you as an FSU fan, allegedly. But um, the – the oh, sorry. Allegedly. Um, but, I, I mean, I don't care if it's FSU, Clemson, or Miami, or anybody else who claims to be a member of the alleged – don't hit it, Jim. I got this. Magnificent Seven. Um, that – the, the listen if you were going to try to break off and be your own league that ship to, ship has sailed you know um so but anyways to get back to it like i feel like mcafee is the welcome change i think i pointed out some of the other events that kind of show that what espn is learning from to your point the way that they're hemorrhaging product and staff shows they need to do something to to get over the era of sports talk you know um, yeah, I'm with you, Jim, please, you know, um, because say what you will. I, I, I mean, if you, if, if the one complaint about McAfee is he says, fuck a lot, you know, he promised he wouldn't say it quite as much. Okay, cool. Listen, I, I can make an argument that makes the, uh, the product a bit more intelligent. And I mean, no offense to the toxic table, but there are times I mean, you're like, all right, guys, are you serious? Like, why don't I just cut a fart and light it? Like, but part, part of the whole, but part of the whole thing of, of the success of the show is that it's kind of like a barbershop talk. Like, they, they, this is how people, yeah. this is how sports fans actually talk. Like, we, we go to work, right. at work, we'll talk. Right. This is how we actually talk, and that's the well, whole listen, idea. No, 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 and, and that's good. Listen, I'm gonna have, I should have that attitude as somebody who claims himself as the student of the game. I'm trying to be a bit more intelligent about it than they are, and that's okay. Hey, I ain't mad at them getting the bag. Don't get it twisted. I'm just talking about my personal preference. And somebody could tell me, well, Kyle, you're still full of yourself and you talk too fast anyway. Okay, cool. You're not listening to me. Well, and, and here's the thing, too. Like, it's, and I, I say this as a person that at times will use the F word as a comma, but like, <laughs> you don't like, say it's, <laughs> it's easy to use the word, right? Like, I know when, when Howard Stern first went to, went to Sirius and uh, Sirius XM, well, well, it is now Sirius XM. Right. Uh, technically, Sirius, Sirius XM Pandora, but that's a whole other story in and of itself. Really? Um, oh. Yeah, they own Pan Sirius owns Pandora. Okay. Um, but when he first went to Sirius, it like everybody was like, "Oh, cool!" Like they were able to swear and blah blah blah, and like, and not that they didn't, but like he kind of put an edict out to his staff is like, "Don't use it just because we can." So like, I, I I think having having like a little bit of reins on it where you have to be. Sometimes creativity and vocabulary can be even better than the F word. Correct. Yeah. I, I have thus fluctuated in that direction myself. You know. Not that you know about it any episodes where EJ comes on and I have to mark the some bitch explicit, but that's a whole other question. You, you, hey, look, you know, you, 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 you know, I know you what know I'm what you saying. Hey, listen, there's a reason why I'm talking with Danny Thompson tomorrow when I record the student of the game instead of you. And not me. Yeah. I don't want to have to go explicit for the second time this week. I mean, I will on. look, look, I can always hold back. If you need me to hold back, I will. No, hold you back. can't. She, I could, but I can't go. No, you can't. I'm I'm you, right this, Come on. I can walk doing the show with your kid on your shoulder. Get the fuck off me. You can listen to me, motherfucker. I can fucking not say fuck whenever I want to. Yeah, just let me know. <laughs> no. No. Oh my god, I killed Kyle. You bastard. I have no idea. <laughs> yeah, right. I have no idea why Pat McAfee has any appeal. None. <laughs> no, but like, you know, it's funny. I thought ESPN was going away from the whole personality based thing, but they kind of feel like they are going towards it now. 
that could be the personality. Stephen A is the face, the face, the face of the other, other company. You know, they have certain guys that are, you know, as they're laying off 7,000 more employees, they're hiring him and, you know, I feel like they're going back, going to the more FS1 model kind of sort of. Serious question, though. Mm-hmm. Did they really go away from the personality model or were they suffering from personalities leaving them and getting them into the trouble? Was the problem that they hitched their wagon to personalities with which didn't eventually mesh with them, right? Right. Because the whole um, and, and listen, I, I don't have a problem with her. She was just never my favorite sports analyst. I think she made some bad conclusions, but they Jamil tied Hill. that wagon, yeah, to Jamil Hill. Um, Michael uh, Michael Smith is amazing. Yeah. But he left too, you know, for his own reasons. Which I mean, he's doing great, and I'm glad to see it. You know, Bramani Jones. Um, and a list of others, and they also hitched their wagon to uh, Mike Greenberg, which was a bad idea, too, for reasons that aren't even half as cool as the other one. Well, well, well hold on. So you mean, Mike, you mean you're talking about Mike and Mike, of course. I'm talking about him hosting Get Up and that show being down. I will say this much about Get Up, though. I don't, I used to hate it. It sucks. Correct. Hate as much anymore. Because they, they but, but what they've done, they've, they've, Stop right, the... there. Stop right there. Your description yeah. of I don't hate it as much anymore is all I need, buddy. <laughs> you can like, I've, 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 look, I don't hate eating crap as much as I used to. I've just developed a taste for it. <laughs> like that's basically like what you just said. Like the first time I tried it, oh my god, it was terrible. But after the hundredth time, <laughs> I've kind of gotten used to the taste. It's like data trying to. No, they they they, they done drink the first time. You know, go ahead, AJ. I'm sorry. He's on delay. It's I know. I'm, no, no, no. I'm hold on. I'm, I'm, it's uh, it's the uh, thing catch up here. So apparently, he's, apparently the space vans in or excuse me, the security vans in space. <laughs> So we have that that lag. <laughs> note, note to self: Don't park security van in in basement. Can can. Can you can you no. hear me, EJ? <laughs> <laughs> That's a TikTok there for us, right there. <laughs> that, that video alone. No, um, they they modified a lot of of their show though. Uh, Get up, and it's much better, much more palatable now. I think Greenberg's very talented. To be honest with you. Well, that's a he's problem. he's great. He's great. Cook, he's he's cook. But for me, he's cookie cutter sports talk. He's simple and to the point. Then how the Wait, this is Pat McAfee era. How the fuck is he talented if he's cookie cutter? No, what I'm saying is that he's not gonna say. What what I'm saying is that he's not controversial. He's not gonna say anything out of line. He's just kind of. That doesn't mean he's crisp, though. I mean, he. I don't feel like he's polished, and he's that guy. You can be cookie cutter without being entertaining. That's my point. I can put basically anybody in that chair, and the job can be done. That I'll agree with. No, no, he's not special. As I say that, yeah. yeah. Uh, How the hell is he talented in pulling down the damn millions that he is? And the, talking about MF for stealing money, he's a you know, hey, There's, you know, there's you no know, reason to pay Mike Greenberg what they pay him. You know, you know, I, I you know, I, I've always called him. I, I've called him safe. He's safe. He's yeah, definitely. You, you safe. shouldn't. You and you shouldn't pay somebody as much as they pay him to be safe. Like. Well, I'm trying to find it like, okay, Bob Costas is safe, right? Sort of. Dan Pat, well, he's not as safe as he used to be. That's probably not the no, best he's, example. He's a, little, he's a little more, little more mouthy and political these days. Because he can be. Dan yeah. Patrick was safe, is safe, right? But they couldn't retain yeah. him because he was actually, are you ready? Talented. He's really yeah. good, man. I, I, I've, I'm i back on that wagon the last, the last year or so on the Dan Patrick wagon. Amazing. Yeah, no. Great uh, voice, he, too. Nick Wright was safe. He was safe? Absolutely. Mm. You don't think he's safe? How is he controversial? Now, on his own pod, since he's gotten that and he's gotten bigger, remember I I did say, I said was safe, not just because he left that company, but it's less so now. Now that he's such that, 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 that he's saying a lot more political takes, I would also argue that we as, uh, Sports personalities, EJ, are dragged into politics more now than ever before. You know, I don't, got a, I don't got a problem with it. Well, yeah, I know you like beat off the political news and stuff, but like, 
you know, I um, which I'm not mad at you. There's a few hot politics. Funny thing is, funny, funny thing is, I, I love politics, but of the three of us on here, on Twitter, who talks about politics on, on, on of the three of us on Twitter? That guy, the white oh, guy, the woke yeah, one, the woke exactly. guy down oh, my, to my left. Yeah, I, yeah, I won't, I won't shy away from that. Wokey McWokey pants. I mean, and listen, here's the thing: as much as I'm sure Jim and I will vote for a lot of the same candidates, there's a few times I've had to go on Twitter. I don't think that's exactly what you're going for. <laughs> I, I feel like I, I, one day I'm going to dedicate an episode to read, read Jim's tweets. Oh my God, it's hysterical. <laughs> Your obsession with my Twitter is 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 odd. Hey man, well, do, odd, odd. I, I find it interesting. I think I think some things you say are very smart, and 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 not shocking. This very bold. If I may be honest, Jim, the reason why, that the reason you're why talking, he, so it's good. Yeah, true. The reason why he likes your Twitter so much, it's the same way yeah. that um, Eric Cartman enjoys the Scott Tinneman chili so he can lick the tears for the taste of <laughs> unmitigated sadness. <laughs> I mean, listen, Jim, I I'm not going to tell you to do this, but I will put it before the committee. I missed all that because my, my internet's still lagging. What, what, the reason I like it was because of what? It, it, you'll catch up to it. No, uh, you'll, well, you'll get it tomorrow when you listen to the playback. No, or, or, or in post. But the punchline is this. Like, I, I, if you, I'll put it before the committee. If you were inclined, Jim, to have yourself okay. or any of us bring on a tweet <laughs> tonight, during the Huddle Up podcast is a segment, bro. I'm down. Let's do this. I mean, we can. <laughs> well, maybe we'll talk about it. We'll so we'll put it up to yeah. We'll put it to the committee. It works for Jimmy Fallon. I'm just saying. Yeah, we'll put it. We'll put it up to the committee. The hell Jim, yo, yo, Jim's tweets are fucking. Oh my god, like hockey tweets, awesome. Fucking. I put very, before very that we replaced tool time with EJ reading some of Jim's favorite. Oh god. <laughs> oh, I don't dude, know. That'd that'd awesome. that far, but... That'd be awesome though. We can't, um, we can't replace tool time. But... It's got a product line. My bad. Exactly. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Um. A couple of things also on the media thing. Um, we were talking last week, you and I, Kyle, and uh, and Jim was in, a, in the country too, also in our group text. And uh, Bomani Jones, you mentioned him a while ago, and yeah. some of the things that you're off the Bomani wagon now because of the race baiting. I, I, I'll be honest with you, I, I've been a fan of Bomani even before he got, before he was into the sports media. You were, um, I, and I like I I I, I like him, but. I, I can't say disagree with you on that. I can't I can't say disagree with you. I, I think the race baiting is getting a little bit much done with him. Can I use the P too much to regard. where I can understand why someone, even if you agree with what he says, it's a bit much now. Get, could is it fair to say that he's using to use the P word on what he's doing? Propaganda? Pandering. Oh, pandering. Oh, sure. I mean, I'll agree. I'll agree with it, and EJ will agree with it in a minute and a half when he gets when he hears what you say, with the question that you asked. So listen, if the woke guy agrees with me that Bumani Jones is pandering, the dude's pandering. I'm I think. Yeah, I mean, and yeah, I, I think I think there's a lot of that in. I mean, whether it's on the woke side or the other side, there, there's a lot of pandering oh. everywhere. Because <laughs> it's where the bread is buttered, right? I mean, like let's we're like we'll, we'll call it like it is. Like the, there's there's people that have figured out a formula and exploit said formula but when he was just a talent and he was a guest on things he would bring up those issues and be very intelligent about it and i was on the bamati fan you know fan wagon now uh, i i would feel nervous even walking up to him um almost fair. to talk to him fair. you know i don't blame you for that yeah, yeah, that's fair. And, and, and unfortunately the last seven years seven and a half years have has created that environment Sure, and I'm not saying it's there without reason. This isn't yeah. me saying how dare he. I'm just no. It's it's reality. It's not. It's not a, you know. It's not a necessarily a criticism of anybody. It's just the reality of where we are. A hundred percent right. Yeah. No, I I I I I agree with you on that. It it it, it, it would be uncomfortable to to see like talk to him like that. Yeah, it would be uncomfortable. I I totally agree with you on that. Honestly. Um, what else here? Get out of here. Oh, ring culture. <laughs> oh boy. I don't even like that you call it that. Like when you say ring culture, I feel like that's something that Jim discusses weekly on the Three Count Thursday podcast. Bing! <laughs> oh, really? Name for name of a spinoff wrestling show? <laughs> ring culture. I agree. By the way, actually, we, it would be a great name for a, a wrestling podcast. For example, I have to tell you, ring culture, an excellent example. 
I know I'm not supposed to see it, but the G.I. Joe crossover into John Cena t-shirt here awesome. that Jim's wearing. Again, I don't know how I can see it, but I can. Ba, ba, da, ba. Anyways. Looking through the, some of the takes you had on, on here earlier on the uh, on our text. Because it kind of connects to what we're saying. You and I got into, got into a big, a big, big ado about Bird and Steph. Yeah, Curry and, read a and Steph novel after and taking fucking. Were you golfing? Were you, were you golfing at the time? What's going on? Yeah, you were quiet I, I for a couple just, hours. Yeah, I, I, I don't know what I was doing. I wasn't golfing that day. But. Something far more important than entertaining your silliness. That's probably <laughs> what it was. I mean, your wife's a pretty lady, Jim. I get that your time is spent other places sometimes. You know, you got a reminder of your Michigan fanhood and all of it. Well, you started it first. This is after the Gold State Law. Oh, no, no. No, sir. No. No, sir. Oh, no. Look what you did. No, 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 no. No, no, no. Okay. This is not me. <laughs> this is not me. You can remind her name is Big Jim. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> no, no, sir. Do not say I started this when your dumb ass dragged me into what ended up being another damn lightsaber duel with my editor at three point conversion being Alex Babb. Okay. When you try to drop this stupid ish. Yeah. I said it on your thread. I might add. And he thought he was going to take me down. Oh, Kyle's just stupid football, man. And yet nonetheless, we locked lightsaber to like, you know, I don't want to say we locked lightsaber. To yeah, lightsaber. but you, you, but you, but you jumped on after the day after the Warriors lost to the Lakers in the. In the oh no, no! I wanted to, to, uh, to, to hear your retort. You deserved this questioning. This is called journalism. And I, so, but I kept saying to you, though, like, if he won the fifth ring, he didn't win the fifth ring. So no. And now we set successfully yet. into the ring culture conversation. See, this wasn't a good host or guest does for his host. He sets the table for you to run the show well. What can I say? Except you're welcome. What can I say <laughs> I mean, at this point, you're pretty much the host of this show now, too, as well. <laughs> I mean, well, it's only because he doesn't have internet issues. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Good point. Look, okay. Fucking here's here's the question that, that I posed somewhere between messages 147 and 182. I, I, I lost track of exactly <laughs> Like what I don't understand, and maybe maybe talk to me like I'm a three year old. I don't know, but like what I don't understand is why there is the difference between four and five. And I understand that five would be matching the number that Kobe has, but like when you're at four and five, I don't understand how getting the fifth ring makes the difference if you are still performing at that elite level. Like it's he may perform at an elite level, and it's not his fault that his team loses. Like, it, so getting that fifth ring isn't necessarily a product of him playing well or not. It's a product of the team playing well or not. So that's maybe what I wasn't understanding about your argument of like, if he gets the fifth ring, he gets into that conversation. <laughs> where kobe is at because kobe's got five like that that's the part i didn't get first of all can i just say as love jim talking basketball i'm so fucking proud of kyle having popcorn <laughs> <laughs> jim talking basketball. Oh. is that the uh the, the gluten-free like the skinny, the skinny pop. pop skinny pop yeah thank you jim i love you for that <laughs> <laughs> but EJ, like that's that's my question to you is 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 why why does ring ring four to five make because, that big of a I think difference? Because when you when you enter a top ten discussion, the the margins become small. So any, any little thing you can use an advantage of an argument, you can use that. Now that doesn't mean every single person in my top five is, for example, is, has has a uh, has oh, no, my top ten rather has uh, five rings. I have built my top five. But he has two rings. Uh -huh. The impact of the game was huge. Okay. So, but my my argument would be, when you're when you're into that tier, shouldn't it be at that point more about how the player is playing himself into the later portion of his career? Oh yeah, and that's what and helps Curry also his team being successful or not. Well, yeah, and that's part of it too. Also, and one reason why Le why the LeBron Jordan argument to me is a lot closer to give credit for. I'm still Jordan 1, but to, to, to say that LeBron's not close to Jordan in the argument is silly. For that reason alone, he just said. 
Right. Cause I mean, like, and I'm going to, I'm going to make the comparison in, in, in a hockey argument because like Alex Ovechkin right now is still scoring at the level of a guy 10 years, his junior at 38 years old. Okay. When Wayne Gretzky finished his career at 38 years old, which is where Ovechkin is today, he was scoring four and five goals a season. He did the bulk of his work in his twenties. How can really? bums like that even afford skates? Holy shit. Where, where Ovechkin is still scoring goals at an elite level at 38 years old. And did, it, I, did, did I compare Ovechkin like, to LeBron versus like Gretzky to Jordan at one point on the, on the podcast? You, like, you may year? have. Um, yeah, I hope you didn't. I, th I thought but, I did that like, last, last summer. But, but my point is like right now the Capitals are not a good team. But Ovechkin is still playing at a level that is at or with some of the best players 10 years his junior. So like I like to me, it's not well, the Capitals didn't win a cup. So like it, it invalidates his play in a way. It's like it, especially in the later portion of his career, I think you should evaluate the player more than the team and the team's success. Don't get because me it, it becomes that either. much harder when a guy is 35, 38, 40 to be that dominant of a player and to be at that elite level. It's easy to be elite. Well, I shouldn't say it's easy to be elite. It's easier to be elite when you're 25 to 30 than it is when you're 35 to 40. That's accurate. That's accurate. And and, and that's where the army for stuff begins still to, also too. He's still he's 35 right, right now playing at an elite level. He's still a top three player in the league in my opinion. Um definitely top 5. Um greatest shooter of all time and the impact he's had in the game, you know, he if like when he when you talk about Mount Rushmore Mount Rushmore for example, to me Mount Rushmore isn't about the four best players. To me, is the four most impactful or influential okay. players, whatever. Steph Curry, to me, at this point, is on that list. Okay, Steph Curry on the court has changed the game of basketball. Whether you like it or not is an argument, but no one can say that Steph Curry has not changed the game of basketball in the last ten. Years. I see what he's doing. This is the Hitler defense. It wasn't for good, but he was one of the most influential people on the planet. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. No, nah, but but that's a that's a wrong. I mean, that's a, that, you're, you're comparing, yeah. You you said something in your previous statement. That I think is what you it, when you when you go to make a statement that uh, like Steph is going to potentially replace Kobe in the top five. Something you said in your previous statement, I think, is what you need to lean more into, is that at thirty five years old and beyond, he is still one of the top blank players in the league today, playing better than guys who are five ten years younger than him. Yeah, that that's the kind of stuff that I would sign off more to prop up your argument to where Steph is making his, his, you know, no his sense. impact on the top five players of all time, not the ring stuff. Because when you're talking about rings four to five, I think that's becoming irrelevant. Now, if you want to say he's got four rings versus this guy who has zero, that may have a bit more validity to it. But well, four to five, but, but it won't I, I matter. Don't... But it will matter also too if you're still at that age, where you're still the best or at very least one B, uh, player on that team. Oh, so for it. example, so for example, this is where the LeBron part gets in, it comes to play. LeBron is technically still the best player in the Lakers. Technically, I mean AD probably most important now because of the age gap. But there's no question that they they're not there at LeBron. You know. So him getting number five is that would be a big deal for him, because it, there's been, never, there's never been a player who's been this good at this age ever in this league ever ever this good. Sure, sure, sure. Hey, listen, Jerry Rice was an amazing receiver at age thirty eight, damn near forty, mm -hmm. but he That's wasn't correct. the best receiver on the teams later. Right, LeBron. Right. At his peak, could be the best player on the floor at any particular minute. Over the course of the season, <clears throat> nobody, um, or we'll say in this postseason, EJ, mm -hmm. and the only reason why um, I'm not saying he's the most so is because of your boy, Jimmy Butler. Go Heat, bitch. That's um, right. But AD is easily go the, the Try again. It cut off? Go heat, bitch. There you go. The, in the West, AD is clearly the most impactful player um for these playoffs and i Absolutely. don't think it's yeah um but your boy steph curry wasn't able to make enough of an impact to stop a dilapidated player an ad 
from dominating him. No, I get it. AD causes. Oh, look, I'm talking basketball just as good as you, bitch. That's, that's um, awesome. I love it. I'm getting AD, hard on. That's no, kidding. Just kidding. I mean, I would. <laughs> I, I'm not a homophobe. I'm actually quite flattered. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Um, but here you heard that, Mr. Woke. Anyway. Eggplant emoji. <laughs> <laughs> So Jim can't handle that any better than I can. Anyway, Jim, you're going to turn very, very red in a second. Maybe I shouldn't say anything about handling. Yeah, maybe <laughs> I shouldn't say anything about handling things right now. That might get awkward. Anyways, uh -oh. so AD causes matchup problems to where the ideal air quotes lineup or starting five that, that Kerr wants can't be on the floor. I, I acknowledge that. Um, but for me, the reason why Steph Curry can't ever be in the top 10 is because he is an instrument in the as, as in a toolbox that is this team. This team is amassed in a very beautiful way that Steph Curry is allowed to chuck it from the cheap seats the way he does. We'll use the hockey analogy. EJ is a hockey fan allegedly. Um, oh, sorry, Jim. Let, let, let him know. Let allegedly. Him know. Right? <laughs> Thanks, Jim. If, if Draymond the Enforcer isn't on the squad, Steph Curry is not the force that he is. Period, point blank, end of story. Okay? People have shown success and seen success roughing up Curry. By the way, they beat the Sacramento Kings, which still is weird to say in a playoff context, a team that was among the worst defensive players in the playoffs this year, and then immediately they transitioned to what is arguably the best team in defense, especially out on the perimeter, in the playoffs. And what happened? It's not so much that there's a blueprint as much as the guys have to have the necessary tools for that blueprint. This isn't, and again, this isn't me saying that Steph Curry didn't change the game in some way, but it's also me saying there were other guys that were capable of doing what he's doing now in the past. They just weren't really allowed to, whether it's hand checking being present. Whether it's just simply the culture of the goddamn game being different, period, point blank. You're going to tell me that in this, in the NBA of these days and this time, that Larry Bird and not Michael Jordan would not have developed the ability to shoot the ball like this from distance. Because if you think that, you're wrong. Both guys who developed their games over and above and, and, and added elements to their game and can do basically anything they wanted. In the case of Larry Bird, how many horror stories out there are there from former opponents where he says, hey, I'm going to do this, and they know it's coming, and he does exactly what he promises he's going to do and scores in their stupid face. I was waiting for you to say hey. Dan Marley like he did like, in, a, in a text. Well, I mean, Dan Marley is a better example because all he was basically was a long range shooter after about year four or five, because he got back injuries and couldn't dunk the same way anymore. Right. That's what do, I'm getting at. Do you know, Dan, do you know what Dan Marley is, uh, Jim? Yes, I know who Dan Marley is. Oh, you do? Interesting. Okay. Take that, bitch. I'm, I'm, I'm impressed. I'm impressed. Dream team it's member. Right. Actually, <laughs> like, dream team number two, I think, right? Correct. Very good. Yeah. yeah. Um, Mark Price would have been the comp, actually. I would have saw someone who would be like Steph Curry. He's not athletic enough, but okay. He was he was sneaky athletic, actually. He was more athletic than he looked. I'll give you that. Yeah. I mean, he, he had a nice little first step, you know. But, but, but I see a point there. I, I disagree with, with, with the Curry part. But I see your, your argument. You Makes can sense. be as wrong as you like. It is your show tonight, my friend. <laughs> Just stand there in your wrongness and be wrong and get used to it. I like it. I like it. No, um, like I said, man. Like I, my my whole my whole question because I, I I can't I can't get deep into the weeds in an NBA conversation. It is is it's not it's not football, where, though. where I can live. But like my my whole thing was I I think you were approaching it the wrong way because I think you were leaning way too much into the rings when you're talking about what like a, a difference of one. And I I think that's that's a disingenuous. But you, you know why though the rings though here's the reason why this is why this is why we'll drag to the football part of this in basketball especially probably hockey as well but especially in basketball when you have any arguments about greatest of all time and all this stuff to me I'm not saying the rings is the the be all end all of an argument, but the rings arm do way heavier than say football, because yeah, you have much more impact on the game in basketball on both sides of the court. I don't agree. Actually, I'll tell you this. Okay, go ahead. If basketball 
or single elimination in the NBA like it were in college, mm -hmm. you would have a better argument. Because Fair they point. wouldn't be load managing. They wouldn't be saving Curry. They would. It would be very clear that if he is this transcendent shooter, that he would take the games over. Fatigue wouldn't be a factor. Mm -hmm. And he would bomb it from great regularity in the postseason. And I, I can't come up with the greatest example, um, but imagine like he he would be he would look like Jimmy Butler in every game if it were single elimination because there would be no opportunity to slow him with injury. Right? Finals right. in the past, the ankle thing caught up with him. Right? This is why he couldn't close out LeBron when he was basically a one man team in Cleveland. In my opinion, is he was fatigued. Right. Mm -hmm. So I feel like in single elimination, that's taken out of it. And Kerr's allowed to be Kerr. He's allowed to be that dude that runs all over the floor that can sink things without even looking at him and all that kind of stuff. You know, he has the opportunity to look like more, uh, look more like Patrick LeVon Mahomes the second. Fair point. So, fair point. In but series, I, not so much. Right. No, no, fair point. No. And I also said that, 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 you know, in, in the NBA, like, the best team almost always wins every year because you have the larger sample to to prove that. Whereas mm -hmm. with football or in college basketball, um, you know it's it's very more much much more random. That's why hockey's fantastic because it's the same format as the NBA, but yet much more random. Can somebody tell me a world where Jimmy Butler doesn't make it to the Hall of Fame? Because I don't want to. Oh, he's, he's, he's going in. He's going in. His resume, his resume is already good enough. Look at his resume. Rachel Nichols said. Anyways, um, no, no, his resume though. His, no, his res, if you look at his resume and Reggie Miller's, it's virtually the same thing. Yeah, and Reggie Miller's an, an underappreciated. I would take him over Curry um, today because I feel like were he allowed to, Ooh, he could have I don't that know. Shot See, too. the thing about Curry makes Curry special is that he creates his own shot. Reggie Miller, not so much. He was someone. In the, in the what are you talking Miller. about? Reggie Do was not a shot maker in the same way Curry's not. Curry is. What are you talking about? Create, define, create a shot. It's about with, with the with the basketball, with the Reggie, basketball. Reggie Miller didn't have to create shots because just shot at your goddamn face and made you pay for it. <laughs> he stabbed you in your stupid heart. So does so does so does Steph and, though, and, and Steph did it with the, with the ball in his hands. In the words of Brad Pitt, and I can say it this way now, thanks to Brad uh, uh, Pat McAfee. What the fuck are we doing here? <laughs> <laughs> like, I guess, where, huh? I, guess I, I guess that's where we'll end it. I guess you know, but that was a good, good discussion on on, on ring. Here's, here's what I, here's what I'll say about what? this because you made a comparison to to uh, the NBA and the ring argument and and, and kind of stacking that up. Who's better? Um, Wayne Gretzky has won f won four Stanley Cups in his career. Four or five? He won four. Four. Okay. Okay. There yeah, are a hockey fan, EJ. What the fuck? There are I'm multiple being, being players. Old. There are multiple players who have won five stars, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven Stanley Cups. So there is nobody who will question who is the greatest hockey player of all time, and that is Wayne Gretzky. Another guy whose name comes up is Gordy Howe. How many did he win? Also four. So rings, even in, in, in that type of a sport where the field is smaller, so greatness can raise a team up, you can only raise a team up so far. You can only raise a team up so far. Are there any players that get the respect of a Gretzky or how that have the five-plus rings? Uh, yes. Lemieux, I would guess. No, he doesn't have that. Lemieux has two, yeah, right? Lemieux has two. Many. He has uh -oh. two. Lemieux. Damn it! Why can't back I, back I think? Maurice Richard had eight. Um, Jacques Lemaire had eight. Now we're going back a little bit further in time when the field was smaller. Right. Um, That's a Bill Russell argument, though. But but even in even into the seventies and eighties, guys uh, like like Guy Lapointe and Larry Robinson um, had more. Brian Trottier had more. In, in, are those too. guys considered? In, no, that was during Gretzky's era in the in the seventies and eighties. That's in are the those guys era. considered top ten smoke. all time guys, Jim? No, top ten. Like we do a top ten list, all time hockey players, all time. I don't, not no, I don't think though. anybody's putting Brian Trottier or Larry Robinson in their top ten. You know, nobody has Wilt in their top five. Oh wait, <laughs> Jesus Christ, I do. 
Number five. And he still says it proudly. I need to stop eating my popcorn. Is he too high? You think it's too high? Well, absolutely. Okay, fair enough. It's okay. You want to know what defeated Wilt Chamberlain? The three seconds rule. Now, did he change the game? Surely. But the moment we said, hey, you big oaf, stand somewhere else on the court for just a moment, you know, <clears throat> I, mean, I don't mean to cheapen Wilt by saying that, but. And by the way, uh, uh, by way, Jim, I, by way, Jim, I don't have Kobe on my top five for the record. I don't know if you knew that. Because you mentioned okay. top five and Kobe. He's, he's number eight for me for the record. Okay. Yeah. What the f- <laughs> Yeah. I got I got I got I got Jordan, LeBron, Kareem, Magic, and Wilt. Top five. Then I got Russell, Duncan, Kobe, Bird, and Kirby. You have Will over Kobe. I can't believe it. That makes no damn sense. You're going to try to tell me that Wilt can create his own shot? No, he's a center. It's hard to do that in that era, too, especially. Centers can't create their own shot. What, what if a center could create his own shot? Where would he play? Yo, 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 Jokic could. No, uh, uh, that's not what I asked you. What if a center could create his own shot? What, where, where would he be placed in your top 10? Well, Kareem could. Kareem has the sky hook, so technically that'd be one. That's, I, that's not really the creation of a shot. That's a gimmick. Right. I asked if a center could create his own shot, where, we sh- where should he belong in your top five? Elijah Wan technically would be the only one that can I can think of do that. So and he's like he was so like number two. he was he up. was he was ten until last year. Like I said, what the fuck? <laughs> you know, Kyle Kyle get big man. If 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 things go the right way, I don't want to jinx anything. You're going to mm-hmm. be in real trouble coming up soon with your alleged NBA status. If I get hot, I'm just saying. <laughs> Keep watching, Ooh. brother. Well, cliffhanger. Watching, I like it. I like cliffhangers, man. Anyway, as she always says, plug away someone. As as she always says, um yeah. I mean, Jim, do you want to follow me? I- <laughs> yeah, you know, I I I will get uh, I'll be like, I'll be the opening act to the uh to the to the uh the, the closing band. Uh no, you can get me at Big Jim Sports on Twitter. Um, you know, you can get the link tree there. But uh Huddle Up Podcast, Huddle Up Podcast Incorporated. Um, we have an episode dropping tomorrow actually or wednesday this week um so the second of this month's uh offering we will uh be getting back together shortly to um put some more of the off-season content i gotta get back on my observing things i've gotten lazy i think we've all gotten a little bit lazy but that's okay. yeah it happens we're in Austin mode. i have a championship game to cover bitches we, well yeah but you also don't do a little side project on the huddle up podcast feed so i'm not i'm not criticizing you i'm criticizing myself and others uh we've all gotten a little bit lazy there but we're again we're kind of in off-season mode and we're just enjoying things so it's not that big of by a the deal. way if you're having trouble during the off-season please observe the student of the game podcast coming back after its single week hiatus last week listen wait. here bitch sit back and wait your turn um <laughs> but, uh, follow, right. follow the show at Huddle Up Podcast on Twitter, uh, Facebook, and uh, TikTok as well. Uh, then you can get uh, Three Count Thursday, Three CT at Three Count Thursday across all platforms, uh, including Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, uh, YouTube. Um, but both of those, um, you can just hit the link tree in any of our bios because that will get you everywhere you need to be. It's like the uh, was the American Express card, right? That's a major league reference. You, are, you want? Um, no, 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 no. Don't steal home without it. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> ding, ding, ding. Sorry. Um, but then uh, also uh, discussions with a nobody. Actually, when we get done recording here, I'm going to stay in studio and get one of those. It's been a little while. Um, so I'm going to have one of those coming out. I have some ideas uh, coming up on that. So um, at DWAN pod on Twitter and Facebook.com. Slash really? discussion with About fucking time. <laughs> oh, fuck off. Thanks, Pat. I mean, Jim, listen, by the way, this is how I know uh, Big Jim is talented in the fashion that he is. Um, He can have a discussion with a nobody, and I'm still excited. Anyways, of course, I am Kyle Nash, a student of the game. You can find me on Twitter at the SOTG. Find me on Instagram as the same, the SOTG. Check out my writings as the student of the game on the student of the game Facebook page there, right? And then also check out my work covering the xfl regular season on the three-point conversion check out also my writings and work on the night shift podcast in connection with the black and gold banneret name changes because you know vox and sb nation and and stuff yeah fine um of course check out the work we have if uh you haven't yet 
uh, on the socials, not only from the XFL championship post game, but some shots from the NFL draft acquired by Dalton Tinklenberg. A7B in sports was in the building thanks to him. So thanks to Dalton for delivering on that. Mentioned the three-point conversion as well. And look out very shortly with that because we are in the talk to return to Jacksonville next season to cover the Jaguars. So look for that as well. And of course, my work with the Student of the Game podcast to talk with Reed Johnson today of the Mark Cast, big spring football guy. Great insight there on how the XFL is progressing. So check that out if you're into that. Also, tomorrow night, uh, this being recorded on a Tuesday night, Wednesday night will be, of course, a Student of the Game podcast. Well, I will, have, of course, get back with the madman Mark Mancini and also have Danny Thompson, big Google himself on the show, to talk a bit of action with the conference finals starting up with a lot more sane takes than Wilt Chamberlain in the top five. Um, yeah, so looking forward to all of that. Uh, thank you to Jim, of course. Thank you to EJ for taking uh, his whooping and, uh, you know, standing there in his wrongness and getting used to it. Uh, but until next time, everyone, class dismissed. Oh, and by the way, Jim. Good job, fellas. Thank you for the popcorn recommendation. I had trouble putting the ish down because it's delicious. Right? And by the way, and by the way, Kyle, get get on the Ted Lasso thing, man. Let's go. I don't have Apple TV, man. And by the way, some of us are still working. This isn't an off season. In May, I have Mother's Day, two birthdays, and in late April is my daughter's birthday as well. I've been busy. <laughs> Kyle, get 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 with the Ted Lasso thing, please. Excuses, please. I guess he's Thank still you. lagging. Excuses. Yeah. No, I'm not lagging. I, I'm repeating myself one more time. <laughs> I'm gonna remember this next time you have a sleeping child in your arms during the huddle of podcast, bitch. <laughs> I try to tell you when you listen. Are, are, are you, <laughs> I tried to tell you, but you wouldn't even listen. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting better at that. Yeah, you're pretty good. Damn, I got popcorn in my microphone. I'm